Hi to all. Today we will discuss electrons in resonance spectroscopy, their introduction and instrumentation of electrons in resonance spectroscopy, the most important topic of inorganic chemistry. So as we know, spectroscopy means the interaction of electromagnetic radiations with matter. When different types of electromagnetic radiations interact with matter, then it gives different types of spectroscopy. For example, absorption of electromagnetic radiations by the matter in radio frequency region, then it gives NMR spectroscopy. Similarly, if absorption of electromagnetic radiations with matter in microwave frequency region, then it gives ESR spectroscopy. Okay. So, this electron spin resonance spectroscopy is also known by electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy EPR and electron magnetic resonance spectroscopy EMR. This spectroscopy was first introduced by Russian physicist Eugeny Zhevsky in 1944 by applying a 47.6 gigahertz frequency using copper salt. The basic basic principle of ESR spectroscopy is closely related to NMR spectroscopy but the application and instrumentation are quite different. The definition of ESR spectroscopy is it is a branch of absorption spectroscopy in which radiation having a frequency in microwave region is absorbed by the paramagnetic substances to induce a transition. Here paramagnetic substances are nothing but the matter interact with the radiation in microwave region. So ESR spectroscopy or EPR spectroscopy is observed in microwave region. So generally frequency limit for microwave is 10 raised to 11 to 10 raised to 8 hertz. Okay. So this ESR spectroscopy, the limit of ESR spectroscopy it is useful to only paramagnetic substances. Now why ESR spectroscopy? It is powerful technique used to study the free radicals atoms, ions or molecules containing one unpaired electron either in solid or liquid phase, then transitions and actinide ions, so D block or M block elements, these may have up to 5 or 7 unpaired electron, then various point defects in solids, delocalized imperfections, then system with more than one unpaired electron, triplet state containing two unpaired electrons, similarly bi radicals and multi radicals and system with conducting electrons. The limitation of ESR or EPR spectroscopy is it is useful to only paramagnetic substances. The paramagnetic substances are of two types stable paramagnetic substances and unstable paramagnetic substances. Stable means for example NO oxygen or NO2 and unstable means the intermediates observed or formed in the organic reactions. Okay. So the limitation is to only compound should contain at least one unpaired electron. Okay. Now we will discuss instrumentation of ESR spectroscopy. This is block diagram of ESR spectroscopy. So in this block diagram the most important components of ESR spectroscopy are shown with their numbers. First one is source the attenuator, waveguide, sample cavity, electromagnets, detector, modulation coils and phase sensitive detector. So we will discuss all the components of ESR spectrometer one by one. Okay. So the first one is source. The modern ESR instrument consists of first, uh, first component source. Source is nothing but klystron tube. It acts as a source of radiation, microwave radiation is typically produced and amplified by klystron tube which is capable of tuning waves to precise frequency, amplitude and phase. The microwaves are then channeled into resonance cavity by using either waveguide or coaxial cable. The waveguide is most common method, so whatever the microwave frequency or microwave radiations formed in klystron tube or source are channeled into the resonance cavity containing a sample by using a waveguide. Now question is how to generate electromagnetic radiations or microwave frequency in klystron tube. So this is a schematic diagram of klystron tube. 
इन दिस क्लिस्ट्रॉन ट्यूब कंटेंट थ्री इलेक्ट्रोन वन इज हीटेड फिलामेंट कैथोड सेकेंड इज एनोड एंड थर्ड इज नेगेटिव रिफ्लेक्टर सो वे दिस हीटेड फिलामेंट कैथोड जनरेट और इमिट्स ए इलेक्ट्रॉन दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन पास थ्रू द एनोड कंटेनिंग होल एंड देन इट स्ट्राइक्स ऑन द हाईली नेगेटिव रिफ्लेक्टर इलेक्ट्रोड सो दिस हाईली नेगेटिव रिफ्लेक्टर इलेक्ट्रोड हैविंग माइनस चार्ज नेगेटिव चार्ज एंड इलेक्ट्रोन इज ऑल्सो हैविंग नेगेटिव चार्ज सो दे विल बी द रिपल्शन बिटवीन इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड नेगेटिव चार्ज रिफ्लेक्टर इलेक्ट्रोड सो द इलेक्ट्रॉन सेंड बैक टू द एनोड फ्रॉम द नेगेटिव रिफ्लेक्टर इलेक्ट्रोड सो द मोशन ऑफ चार्ज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फ्रॉम होल इन एनोड टू रिफ्लेक्टर एंड बैक टू द एनोड जनरेट ऑसिलेटिंग इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ओके सेकेंड इज अटेन्यूएटर द रोल ऑफ अटेन्यूएटर इज टू एडजस्ट द लेवल ऑफ माइक्रोवेव पावर देन वेव गाइड इट इज अ हॉलो रेक्टेंगुलर ब्लास्ट ट्यूब हैविंग पॉइंट नाइन इंटू पॉइंट फोर इंच साइज इट इज यूज टू कन्वे द माइक्रोवेव रेडिएशन और पावर टू द सैम्पल कैविटी कंटेनिंग ए पैरा मैग्नेटिक सब्सटेंसेस फोर्थ वन इज सैम्पल कैविटी जनरली सैम्पल कैविटी इज प्लेस्ड बिटवीन टू इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट एंड इट इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन सच ए वे टू मैगजिमाइज द एप्लाइड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड अलॉन्ग द सैम्पल डायरेक्शन मोस्ट ई एस आर स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर हैव ए ड्यूअल सैम्पल कैविटी वन इज फॉर दिस सैम्पल और पैरा मैग्नेटिक सब्सटेंसेस एंड अदर इज फॉर द स्टैंडर्ड मटेरियल स्टैंडर्ड मटेरियल यूज फॉर यूज इन ई एस आर स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर इज डाइफिनिल पिक्रिल हाइड्रेजिल डी पी पी एच द सैम्पल कैविटी इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन सच ए वे टू मैगजिमाइज द एप्लाइड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ओके सो जनरली पैरा मैग्नेटिक सब्सटेंसेस आर प्लेस्ड इन ए सैम्पल कैविटी and the quality of sample cavity is measured in terms of q factor q is nothing but energy stored in the cavity divided by energy lost then the next part of esr spectrometer is electromagnet so two electromagnets are used that is north pole and south pole esr spectrum is recorded by slowly varying the magnetic field through the resonance condition by sweeping the current supply to the magnets by power supply the role of electromagnet is to generates a homogeneous magnetic field and the current supply to the magnets to the power supply so when because of this alternating current generates a heat therefore both power supply and magnets needs a water cooling apparatus then modulation coil the variation of magnetic field is produced by supplying an ac signals to the modulation coils oriented with respect to the sample if the modulation is of low frequency then coils can be mounted outside the sample cavity if the modulation is of high frequency then coils can be mounted inside the cavity and then the last component is crystal detector the most commonly used detector is silicon crystal detector which acts as a microwave re rectifier so the silicon crystal detector converts ac to dc dc output okay so thanks for watching this video thank you very much